HVAC 10. This problem requires knowledge of fan affinity laws. The reference handbook seems to be littered with errors. <laughs> which fans, which fan laws can I trust in the handbook? I've looked online and now I'm more confused. Oh boy. So uh, I did not do a full audit of these equations. So I'm not going to say whether they're right or wrong or good or bad. What I will say is that I think the principles are the most important thing. And I looked at one A, B, and C, and I know they're good. So I'll focus on those and say, if we can extract the fundamental principles from one A, B, and C, then I'm going to argue that in all of my time studying for this exam and working with a lot of candidates, I don't really ever look at 2ABC or 3ABC. I'm not saying they're wrong or that you should never use them. I'm just saying I haven't used them. And maybe that's just because I'm building up the, the solution process from the principles. So let's, let's just talk principles for a moment. So if you kind of just look at the first one and, and let's not make multiple changes at a time. Let's suppose, for instance, that we're changing the speed or we're changing the diameter. We're not gonna play around with speed and diameter at the same time. I haven't come across very many problems that will have you uh, changing both of those at the same time. So what's the impact of a speed change on the volume flow rate? What's the relationship between Q and N? Well, they're linear, linearly related, right? I can divide by Q2 on both sides. I'm just gonna keep the diameter the same. So Q1 over Q2 is N1 over N2. So I'll summarize that by just saying, the volume flow rate is proportional to the speed, linearly proportional. How about the pressure jumping down to 1B? We're going to just keep the diameter the same. The pressure is proportional to speed squared. Pretty much what we, we would expect there. Oops. Pressure is proportional to speed squared. We also have some interaction with the density. We'll come back to that at the end, but for now, let's just assume that density is not changing. And then lastly, the power, they call it W. I kind of like to call it W dot just to remind ourselves that it's like work per unit time, but you can do what you like. I know the units are all a little, it's a fun time in the reference handbook. Um, that's proportional to the speed cubed. So all of this is perfectly analogous with the pump um, affinity laws as well. So really no surprises here. Where it gets a bit more interesting is with the diameters. When you start changing the diameter of a fan, things, uh, things get interesting. So here, now we're going to ignore the speed and just focus on the diameter. For volume flow, it goes with the cube. So the volume flow rate is proportional to the cube of the diameter change. So what's, I'm not gonna do a derivation for that. I try to prove that to you, but what's just like an intuitive sense check for that? The way I like to think about it is diameter has length units and volume flow rate has volume units, which is length cubed. So if you change the diameter, then you're kind of changing the length, the width, and the depth, or I don't know, like, I don't know if that's helpful to folks, but that's actually how I think about it. Like when you make the pipe bigger and you're flowing things through it faster, that's sort of the rationale that the uh, volume flow would go with the cube of the diameter. Whereas the pressure is only gonna go with the square of the diameter because it's only the area, it's, it's uh, force per unit area. So it's one less dimension in there. And then power, W dot, let's recall that um, we, we, what's the formula we use all the time? Um, water horsepower is equal to the uh, volume flow rate times the head, or oftentimes the pressure, delta P, over some constant, like 17, 14. So what is that? Well, Q, we said, goes with D cubed, and pressure goes with D squared. So we should expect then that the power is going to go with d to the fifth. And that's exactly what it does. So now we've got these six ideas 
burned into our brain that really just emerge from looking at one A, B, and C. And you can take and use these over and over again. And I don't know, I think you could probably derive or come at some of these other ones just by doing algebraic transformations on that. Um, but I haven't had to do any more than this. The only other thing I'll mention here is regarding the density. When you're dealing with the volume, notice the density is omitted because the volume is the volume. So it doesn't matter how much mass per unit volume when it comes to this relationship. But now when we're dealing with pressure or power, it does. So it's gonna, if, if you have a more dense fluid, it's actually gonna require more pressure, which is uh, drives there to be more power required as well. So whether you have uh, pressure, that's gonna be linearly related to density and the same for power is linear related to density. So good question there. And um, I didn't do a lot of research, like I said, to check, but when you make the claim that it's littered with errors, first of all, I believe you. Second of all, <laughs> if you care to be any more specific and you wanna poke specific holes in anything under two or three, I'm all ears and happy to have a deeper conversation about that. And uh, I'm especially interested if you've encountered any problems that would have required you to use these other formulas. And if as a result of that, it actually got you into a bad spot where, you know, ended up doing something wrong as a result of it, then I definitely want to know about that so we can, we can address it.